Okay, Dad, we're here today to talk about a story you told me some months ago, maybe even a year, that we'd never heard before about uh, Pop, my grandfather, doing quite an interesting and quite remarkable bike ride. Can, oh, yes. can you give us some idea of that? Yes, I can. I can only tell you what I heard because I was a child of so seven or eight, nine at that stage. The Great Depression was on. Somewhere about 1930, what my guess is about 33 or 34, right in the heart of the Depression, yeah. which was, I mean, the country really was rocking, mm. as so many countries in the world were at that stage. And um, there were no luxuries of any sort. Uh, my father, like many other men in, in Dunedin and New Zealand as a whole, was on the dole, which was, uh, and I think, I'm not quite sure, I know that whatever the government paid those people, it was uh, very... A pittance. Yeah, yes, I, too, I have no idea what it was, except that I know it was a struggle to try yeah. and live in that. We lived in St Kilda, in Dunedin, in a house owned by my grandmother, uh, who had been fortunate enough to have been to have been married to a fairly wealthy builder in Mosgill, and um, he had left her the comfortable position when she died, and she had a house in St Kilda, and she lived in that house and invited us to go and live with her. So that would be and her and... Yes. Now, you've got to imagine that um, a large proportion of the male population of New Zealand was on the, on the dog. Uh, people were at starvation level at some stages, and any money they could earn, they would gladly earn it. Uh, over a period of time, which I cannot describe because I'm not, I, I can't remember it clearly, but um, they befriended a school teacher, a chap who um, whose name was Mr. Brown. I think he told and me. Mr. That. Brown was teaching in I think might have been Forbury School, or it may have been. Some other school in the south, south yeah. and he was called upon by the powers that be to go to Beaumont and take over control of Beaumont School. Now Beaumont is on the um, the road that goes from Milton through it still does through Central Otago and eventually. To Queenstown, yeah. There are two two roads to go into Central Otago. There was then, and there is still these two roads. One is at Palmerston in the north, and the other one south of Milton in the south. And this this trip he did, I don't know the details of what um, sort of arrangements they made, but I do know that Dad was to drive him that Mr. Brown couldn't drive, but he had bought himself a Chevy. And he, he, he required my father to drive him to Beaumont and in the process teach him how to drive. It was a, <laughs> a certain amount of faith and hope in it. Now, Dad, um, can I, uh, just a question on that. Pop would have been able to drive because prior to the Depression, him and his brother were quite good with motorbikes and things like that. So he would have had a skill that other people oh, might yes, not have had. Yes. And not only that, when he lost his job, he was working for Napier Motors in Dunedin, who right. were the Ford Motor agents in Dunedin. Good. And um, what happened was what happens to every person, all, all the registered men getting full salaries were fired mm -hmm. and the uh, cadets learning their to were brought forward to take over the responsibility of doing these jobs. But that's by the way. Uh, to get back to the, the story, they left 
Mr. Brown was the most attractive of a personality for a teacher. Very <laughs> nice. A very nice bloke, and uh, we knew him, all knew him well and liked him. And he hired my father to take him to Beaumont, as, as I said earlier, and teach him to drive. So they left Dunedin sometime mid morning, one morning, to drive to Be Beaumont. It was quite a drive in those days because there was a sealed road, the main south road was sealed down to Invercargill, so they had sealed road down to just south of Milton. But when they turned to go inland, they struck Gravel Road, and there was Gravel Road from there right through Central. There was no sealed road to my knowledge then. Um, and my father successfully got to Beaumont, and I presume Mr. Brown would pull up at the school, introduce himself, and they would organise his, uh, how he lived and all the rest of it. And father, um, my father was left to, 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 do, to his own um, affairs. That, that's the way people lived in those days. Today, so they would arrange somewhere for how to get father back to, to Dunedin. They didn't think of that. And they, it was his job to get back. He was paid for it, the job he did, full stop. Do you so know how much the, he was paid, Dad? Hmm? Do you know how much he was no, paid? No. Right. I could guess yeah. it was probably the very popular sum of a fiver. A fiver, yeah. yeah. Five, five. So he got to Beaumont, and what happened? Yeah. Well, the... They parted company, Mr. Brown went and he got himself organised. Uh, I presume my father had a meal there and he decided to drive back to, to Dunedin, which meant, first of all, driving from Beaumont to Milton on, on a sealed road in he the middle, middle of he the night. He would have biked back, Dad. Biked back. Biked yeah, back. Sorry, did I say drive? Yep. Yeah, no. And, and he'd put the bike on the back of the, of the chef. To go there, yes. Yeah. He took it off. And, uh, so he, my father started to bike back to Dunedin. You say it was 110 miles? 110k, Dad. Okay, oh, yeah, well, I said About 80 80k, miles, 80 miles, yeah. yeah. And, um, and this would have been about later in the afternoon, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. Mm. Fortunately, it was dry weather. So my father started biking, and it got dark, as it does, and he continued biking. He would have a little uh, sort of torchlight uh, light on the front of the car. His brake was a, what they called an Edie Coaster brake, uh, operated off the, uh, the back axle, and there were no, no hand brakes or anything like that. So that was what he was equipped with. It would be pitch dark, there would be no lights around. The farmers were all off to bed and sound asleep and there were no street lights in any place. In fact, no streets. It was on this gravel road back until he got back onto the plain where Milton is. And uh, presumably he successfully got through the gorge it came down through the last part of it, which is the Maluka Gorge, which comes down fairly, fairly so suddenly from, from up in the hills where yeah. he'd been biking, and he'd be coming down like this, pitch dark, or I, I don't know, presumably still pitch dark, and certainly it would be very early in the morning. And then he, he, tried, he biked to Milton which would have been from where he was at the, at the end, of, at the bottom of the Manuka Gorge. It would have been 10, 15, 20 miles from there. It looks like on the maps there that Milton's about halfway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he got to Milton, which at that stage was only just waking up, and there was a little store open. So he stopped at the store and went in and bought a bottle of soft drink. That was his nourishment. And it turned out 
well, I can't give you the details here because I wasn't present, but that the lady who owned the shop and was manning it at that stage in the morning was a Miss, uh, a Miss or Mrs. Lilburn, who turned out to be a relation of my mother's. All oh, right. So he made himself known to her, and I don't know whether she gave him a cup of tea or something, but she was extra kind to him. And then he set off from Milton and to bike back to, to Dunedin, and it's, the road goes like that all the way. And he got to Dunedin, and we lived in St Kilda, which is out towards the beach. And he arrived there sometime in the afternoon. I, I was a child of details then. He arrived back and apparently, from what my mother has told us later, he was that tired they had to virtually put him to bed. Uh, he was not a very, very big, strong man. He was only about five foot three or five foot four and, uh, and built slightly built man, and he had a, a gammy leg. And Eddie, would have, his biking experience would have been limited to biking in Dunedin, and that would have been that, wouldn't it? Yeah. So this is quite a big... Yeah. Dis, dis yeah, he's probably in his youth, they probably used bikes a lot, because yeah. so they were still... But he wouldn't be fit, bike fit at that stage. He would just have to dig in and do that. Cool. So he, he was away from Dunedin 24 hours or maybe Sorry. as much as 30 hours. And he got back, they put him to bed, my mother and my grandmother put him to bed and he slept um, for some, well, I understand something like 15 to 20 yeah, hours. So, yeah. He was exhausted. Absolutely exhausted, exhausted, and he never ever told me the story. My mother told it to me. I never heard my father complain about it. Never heard him growl about his tiredness or his pains that he must have had. His his bottom must have been well, <laughs> well sort of. The, the the bike's seats were weren't exactly. Uh, so Dad, I had great joy, yes, and that was it. So, so essentially, Dad, we we've got to take your word from it because there is nobody else alive that can verify this story one way or the other. That's oh. right, and I have determined beforehand that I would not tell you anything I had heard. Rather, I would tell you as much as I could of what I knew, mm. and. Um, it was it was a very tough time to live in, mm. and uh, I say my father was because of his the fact he was a little man, he didn't talk much, uh, he had this slight limp and so forth, was at a disadvantage, and he suffered. The family, if it hadn't been for my grandmother, uh, they would have been, we would have been fairly hungry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's about the basis of the story. What we know. So that he he would have welcomed this chance to go to Ms. to take Mr. Brown to to um, Beaumont, knowing the difficulties and uh, accepting them because he needed the money. It was quite frankly, they needed the money. Um, I never heard my father complain about it, and in fact I heard very little about it from my father. I heard most of what I heard from my mother, which, who wasn't uh, renowned for absolute truth. <laughs> <laughs> there might be a little bit of a, uh, some romancing there somewhere, but it doesn't matter. It still makes a very good story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does make a, <laughs> uh, good, good. <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure what to say at this particular point, Warren, that's the trouble. Yeah. So it's like, so that's good. unusual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are at St. Clair getting ourselves fueled up, ready to, to get ourselves going. But what we thought we might do is we might wander down to the, um, 
down to uh, Calder Street and uh, just orientate ourselves to the finish. But um, and then and then one, we'll work our way back up to um, up to Beaumont and give ourselves an idea of the um, the gravity of the ride. Um, I, I, well, I think we're underdone, Warren. I think we're underdone. <laughs> More than usual. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the uh, the normal process has has happened. A, a very good and very uh, well thought out um, uh, uh, training program has been largely ignored. <laughs> <laughs>to be the local didn't know where it was but the, the man with the nice German accent said it's on the second road on the right so we'll go down this is where our ride will start. Um, it looks a little bit uh, uh, a sweet, I think, rather than present wee spot. So what we will do is start on our ride, and it will be me, grandson, Rosie, great granddaughter-in-law, and Warren, great uh, gra grandson-in-law. <laughs> and we will start out our trip and reproduce this ride on modern bikes, on modern roads, and during the day, as opposed to an old bike, shingle roads, and at night. We hope so we may have it. We may have it easy by comparison, but we'll but, see. But given the ride, the drive here doesn't look too easy, does it? Doesn't look that easy, does it? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how we go. Let's see. Right, the adventure begins. for those who uh, don't know Milton, it's a probably a pretty standard New Zealand uh, country town. Part prosperous and part decay. But that's about it really. We now have got to go up the side of uh, the Tyree Plain and then we've got to try and find our way into Dunedin, which may be harder than we thought due to the fact that motorways are um, are involved. Part of the new seed. <laughs> yeah, it could be that too. We're just All having right. lunch at the at, at the beautiful what, Lindsay? Beautiful Lake Waihola. Lake Waihola. According to no, it is true. It's true. It's not something you need to <laughs> doubt or Google or anything. Is that right, Ross? That's right. And the support person has made this lovely spread for the boys. <laughs> she has. Look at that. <laughs> Homemade pesto. Lentil salad to keep them going. So hopefully they'll be able, to, we be able to get up we, the next hill. We may not be yeah. able to get off our bums. No. no, no, because look at it, it's beautiful. Yeah. We've got. We're telling yeah, ourselves. Yeah, we've, got a, we've got a few hours. We're telling ourselves we've got less than 40 k's to do. And the biggest hills. About the biggest. And hills. maybe the biggest hills. We're not sure. Um, so we're a little bit worried because the last bit's always the hardest. 
because it's the last bit. Isn't that right, Lindsay? That's it. Yeah. Sounds suspiciously correct to me. So East Tyree is the start of all important things. Yeah. Kin Kinmont, we turn right and we get onto the road there, and he says that's easy. hard work on modern bikes and on modern roads so I'd have the uh, some quite a, a large amount of admiration for my old grandfather doing this for the old the fella that uh, just said we sat in the corner of the uh, of the room with a smiley face and didn't say much with the funny old uh, hearing aid but I must say you've got a he's done a pretty tough job and did a very good job in doing it that's good I enjoyed good fun thank you Warren <laughs> so, Lindsay, um, how are you feeling now? You've hang on. How are you feeling now? You've done the ride. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> um, I'm doing I'm very well, thank you. Worn out. Worn out. But somewhat um, yeah, pleased about the whole process. Yourself, yeah. or you did the whole ride yourself. Where did you go? Oh, I'm very worn out. Thank you very much. I'm quite happy not to walk up any hills, yeah. or even any steps, mm. or have to get up from a crouching position for a little while. For a little, for a little while. while. Yeah. But I did enjoy the the swim at the beach. Yeah. It was nice and refreshing. And now we've all we're all tidied up and we're having a wee a wee drink. But apparently we've come from Beaumont. Uh, uh, Beaumont, where, yeah, where the, the hell's that? I mean, where, uh, excuse me, where, where's Beaumont? <laughs> it's 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 central like Central Otago, apparently. Yeah. Quite a long way, then. It's like a very long way, yeah. yeah. Okay. And what about you? Where have you come from? Uh, well, I've never come from Beaumont. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to go back there? No, I think I'm okay <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> I think I'm okay. Very good. Yeah. That joke will last for a long time, won't it? Yeah, I'm not sure if anyone else will. <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone else will. But I don't think yeah, Roz. I don't think Roz over there. No. Will no. find it funny. Yeah. Yeah. No. 